Covering more than 80,000 square miles, the Pantanal is one of the world's most important and extensive seasonally flooded wetlands. The northern Pantanal is most easily accessed from the city of Kiabar. South of Bacconi, the Transpantaniera is a famous dirt road that ends eventually at Porto Joffre on the São Lourenço River. This part of our trip was a scheduled photography tour with wild images, and our first base was the Busada Piuval, just south of Pacone. It overlooks a large floodplain, essentially dry at this time of year, but still with a few marshy areas attractive to local water birds. Most noticeable were the egrets, mainly great. They were joined by jabiroos and herons such as this flying striated. The jabiroos are impressive beasts and are South America's largest stork. They somewhat resemble the marabou of Africa, although they don't share that species' carrion feeding habits. Black-bellied whistling ducks would often arrive here early mornings. Buff-necked ibis typically preferred to forage in the drier areas. Increasing drainage of the Pantanal's wetlands seems to be to their advantage. A small pool behind the hotel regularly hosted a lone wattled jacana. And on one occasion a young savannah hawk. The hotel also functions as a working ranch, which helped attract these cattle tyrants, which regularly fed around the horses. This is of course another species that has become more widespread as livestock numbers have increased. There were also yellow-billed cardinals, which proved to be common throughout the Pantanal. And a single red-crested cardinal In the same area were rufous-bellied thrushes. This is the national bird of Brazil, a mark of how common and widespread it is. Here feeding with a creamy-bellied thrush, which is a very pale individual, but the dark laws are diagnostic. In different light, this one has more typical coloration. plus choppy blackbirds. Singing greyish bay wings. Guira cuckoos conspicuous enough but hard to pin down. Approachable campo flickers feeding on the ground. A hint of red in the malar streaking behind the bill suggests this is a male. whereas this female has all whitish streaking.
This is another species that has adapted well to increasing agriculture. A cooperative roadside hawk. And a large black and white tegu. Searching the trees around the hotel revealed yellow chevroned parakeets. Chaco chachalacas. Larger and browner than the nominate subspecies, the Pantanal form is sometimes cited as a separate species. Lesser yellow-headed vulture. Purplish jay. Crested oropendula. and a fabulous chestnut-eared arasari. On our first afternoon, we embarked on what must surely be a first for Wild Images tours, a tractor safari. Not surprisingly, the chestnut-bellied guans were a little wary but we still managed some good views. Uncommon, they are found only in the drier northern areas of the Pantanal. As are the great areas we also found here. We also came across a southern lapwing on its nest and another large black and white tegu. Early starts enabled us to appreciate the stunning dawn landscapes. After breakfast, we explored further afield. The favourite spot was a small marsh close to the main track, home to a female Amazon kingfisher, a roost of neotropical cormorants, rufescent tiger herons, with a tiger striped tail wagging juvenile. and an adult with a freshly caught fish. A bare-faced ibis. A pair of limpkins. A perched white-winged swallow, a loafing party of American black vultures, and nearby a flock of southern caracaras. plus a jabiru on its enormous nest. Leading east from here, the track led to a large open marsh and a lake formed by the Rio Bento Gomez, which we explored by boat.
working our way slowly through the water hyacinth laden channels, provided our first good views of Yakari Cayman. Plus wattle jacanas. Black capped Donacobius. and large build turns overhead. Snail kites were a common feature over any expanse of marshy habitat, and particularly so here. Males are dark slaty grey, and at the right angle show an obvious white base to the tail. They also have distinctively orange-yellow bill and legs. The female is brown with mottling and streaking on the breast and buffy patches around the face. Close to the lake shore we came across black collared hawks. Like the kites they favour wetland habitats. Another adult rufescent tiger heron. And a juvenile. Another female Amazon kingfisher. A male ringed kingfisher. Lesser Kiskadees, generally restricted to wetlands unlike the ubiquitous Great Kiskadee. And Southern Screamers. Despite their appearance and lack of webbed feet, they are related to ducks, geese and swans. Later in the afternoon we drove to the lake again, this time to a boardwalk across the flooded marshes. Along here a jabiru was taking a drink. Followed by the almost magical appearance of a giant anteater, which proceeded to show beyond all expectations. This was a male, just evident during a quick scratch. At the end of the boardwalk a tower overlooked a roost of egrets, roseate spoonbills and woodstalks. A small flock of thrush-like wrens were in the surrounding trees. along with monk parakeets. And a black howler, probably a young male. As the sun dipped below the horizon, Nakunda nighthawks began to appear. We returned to the hotel at dusk, where bats hunted around the night lights. 
then after dinner went out on a night drive. We found more giant anteaters. A crab eating fox. Plus a spotlighted little night jar. and a few common parakis. Most were on the ground, but unusually this one perched on a small branch. Moving on from Piuval, we soon reached the Transpantaniera Gates and the official entry point to the Pantanal National Park. From here it is a bumpy drive along the dirt road all the way south to Porto Joffre with 122 wooden bridges crossing the numerous water channels. These bridges offer the best chance of viewing wildlife from the road. We saw our first capybaras here. More Yakari caiman. and a largely concealed marsh deer. Birds included a pair of Brazilian teal, a female snail kite showing how its bill is perfectly adapted to removing water snails from their shells. black crowned night herons. An immature rufescent tiger heron, still with stripes on its neck and mantle. A single capped heron. An overhead wood stalk. A female green kingfisher. an unusually showy grey-necked wood rail. Toko toucans. Yellow-billed cardinal. White-winged swallows. and a white woodpecker on a roadside fence post. We stopped for lunch at the Hotel do Mato Grosso, situated on the Pichiam River. Exploring the river frontage here produced a fishing neotropical cormorant. a plumbeous ibis, a picazuro pigeon, and a juvenile male vermilion flycatcher. Small patches of red are just visible on the head. Seed feeders at the hotel were dominated by yellow-billed cardinals, greyish baywings and shiny cowbirds. A solitary cacique put in a brief appearance. An array of fruit attracted a different range of species, including palm tanagers male silver-beaked tanager. Greyish saltator. Yeah. 
and a superb orange-backed trupial. Later in the afternoon, we watched a male lineated woodpecker at an abandoned research station along the Santa Isabella Road. Along with a male blue crowned trogon. A black fronted nunbird. And a handsome bat falcon. 